Oh, wait, you know what? He doesn't have Metalcraft. If I toast the furnace... Well, no, no, no. I mean, he just... He would just play the painter off the tomb, and then he has Metalcraft. What's up, Bovatels? I, I just don't think I have a way to cut him from either line. Also, if I Wasteland, I don't have Birthing Pod mana. Um, that's a problem. Yeah, I don't have... I don't have enough mana to... Um to pod if <laughs> yeah I think so too Mackie just make him have it just make him have it and then these guys cost two just make him have it that's all I really can do I think we need to ramp up the artifact total. Yeah, I mean, I think we just cast the pod, and if he blows it up, I have a, I have a backup pod. <laughs> I know the painter doesn't kill his cap, but it probably he's probably got a blast or two. That's that's the that's the reason to play painter is you get access, you get to run more blasts than a normal deck. So here comes the first blast. He's gonna hit the revoker. He's gonna hit the birthing pod. Interesting. Okay, I'm okay with this. I'm okay with this. This is okay. This is alright. He can't attack, I have a 2-2. Two -two. Ha! <laughs> if we draw mana... I drew a ley line. Um, if we drew mana there... I could also just play the Enforcer. Then the pod gets sweeter. Like, you could just... It's hard to say. Well, you know, he could just blast this on the stack too. I mean, it's not a it's not it's not a done deal either way. If we think he has a bunch of blasts, that's fine. Why did he hit my revoker? I just don't know what I want to do here. I mean, I could I could I could revoke. I could play the enforcer, excuse me, or I could play the pod. I mean, playing pod Fox says he'll weld the revoker. If he welds Revoker, I get back Pod. So we should play Enforcer. Yeah. If his plan is to weld the Revoker, um, then the correct play is Enforcer, because we're getting Pod back. Enforcer, hope to hit land, slam Pod, activate. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's fine. And this is exactly where I like to be casting my Enforcers. I like to cast these for three mana or less, and that's what we just did. He's cracking, I imagine he's welding, welding the revoker, he's blasting the enforcer, what I mean, maybe he's scared of the birthing pod, maybe he doesn't want to weld. Couldn't he also just weld one of my lands, wouldn't that be problematic? I feel like him welding one of my lands is also uh, problematic. I mean, this is scary because he might find the grindstone, but... Um, You get Pyro, Red Elemental. Plays City, plays Grindstone, we're toast. Alright, good games. Now, this is somebody who's been playing the deck. I've seen Pyro on this deck for a long time. And it's a good deck. And, 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 and one of the nice things about building this version of Painter is it does it serves two purposes for my card pool, for the stream card pool. Um, we're toast here. I don't want him to see the goodies. So, what's up, Big Hibs? Why is the Leyline Gold anyone? It's because of Painter Servant, uh, Black Iron Barkus. So this is a blue black card. These are blue artifacts. This is a blue red card. This is a blue fetch. Um, some of the cards look really pretty after you have Painter Servant in play. Like Mox Opal, see how it's got a blue tinge hue to it. See how this birthing pot is kind of bluish on one side? So like some of the cards look nicer, like like Leyline looks great with the blue, I think. Birthing pot looks okay with the blue. I mean it's just it's just and then these look multicolored. It's cool. It's 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 one of the perks to playing Painter's Servant on Moto is everything looks pretty. Um so you know, with that in mind, like, the cool thing about getting into, to, not that I want to play the deck that we just lost to, 
I, I don't even think it's that great of a deck. It's it's sweet. It's just maybe not my style. We would get into the Enlightened Tutors. We would have another deck to put these Enlightened Tutors into. Um, and we'd also have a reason to finish Aloran because Imperial, Imperial is the last thing I'm missing from Aloran, if you guys are familiar with Aloran. Um, I don't think I finished brewing a more stable version. This was the beginnings of it. This was the beginnings of a more stable Aloran. Then we just like put everything in the board that we were cutting. These are all the cards I was trying to run and decided against. So this would be uh, what we're missing. The main thing from this is the Imperial Recruiters. So uh, we're also borrowing some of these Ancestrals, so maybe we don't want to buy into this deck because uh, I may not have it forever. I won't have it forever, excuse me, John. Um, won't. Confirmed. Won't have access to all these Shardlesses, all these Ancestrals forever, so do we really want to buy into a deck? I mean, we could also buy into We don't need the Phyrexian Tower if we're not going to run the um, Veteran Package. Please play this after losing to Painter. You mean Aloran? I think Aloran's sweet. Here's the thing. Look at the price difference. Aloran got a reprint, whereas another derpy combo that you can do with these tools is... Um... By the way, Meekstone goes really well into this deck because everything's two or less. You notice that? Why don't people run Meekstone in freaking Aloran? Everything is two or less power. Meekstone would be awesome. Meekstone. Anyway, um, Meekstone is a really underplayed card. Stops Tarmagoofs, it stops Delver, it stops True Name Nemesis. Um, if it's not a Batter Skull, it stops it potentially. Uh, Vandillion Clique. I mean, I just, I, why don't I just this card, man? I like this card. It seems like it synergizes with the really well. Everything's two power or less. Anyway. This seems like a mirror breaker. Your opponent's on Delvers and Tarmogoyfs? Alright, well, they don't untap. You can block with them. But let's be honest, who wants to block with the Delver secrets? They can block with Tarmogoyf, and that's pretty good. We also just fly over them, you know, you run Strix and whatever. Yeah, I was thinking of just sideboarding into Back to Basics and Jaces and Forces and what have you. Did I see the misprint buy you in the food chain? I did. And that was the other deck we were going to talk about, Black Iron, is food chain. Here's a problem with food chain. Is um, food chain is really expensive on Moto. I don't know why. It's really expensive. And let me see if this is 15, 16. Oh, it's getting closer. Something like that. Um, you could main deck the Sage or the Revoker. There's enough targets. Like, for example, there's enough Miracles going around that you could you could main deck Sage or you could main deck Revoker. Like, the thing about Revoker is revoking the top does wonders against Counterbalance. You can start sticking all sorts of converted mana costs. So I might actually rather main the Revoker than the Reclamation Sage, and then you get two Pyroblasts in the sideboard. Um... Right, okay, there you go. That was the that was the answer I was looking for. This is just a very rough sketch of how we could play Lauren on the stream. Um, I think the Badlands is wrong. I think it should literally just be a Taiga. I think that we should clean up the fetches. Um, I, I don't I don't think you should run two red sources. I don't know. It's a greedy deck. It's a cool deck though. They are fake misprints. He buys a sheet and cuts them himself, says Dunlivin. Oh, really? Picked up a place at a food chain for funsies. Nice, Black Iron and Paper or Moto? Because Moto, when it comes to food chain, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, if they're Moto food chains, talk to me. I would love to play the deck. Could I borrow them? Yeah, 29 cards for a food chain. Now, I could talk to Nathan. And, you know, we could maybe borrow different cards. I have to give back the Doomsdays when we do this. So we have to fall in love with a different deck. So does everybody understand what Aloran's doing? Does, does everybody understand this combo deck? If you don't, I'm happy to fill in the blanks. Um, 
By the way, this, this sideboard is not correct. I, I don't know exactly how it's going to look. Probably some flusters. Maybe a fluster. Fluster's not so great with shardlesses, though. Shardless. <laughs> Excuse me, agent. Same can be said for Power Blast. It's not completely dead. Like, if you shardless when you have Power Blast and there's a blue permanent, it's fine. Please do, says Big. Alright, so it's a combo. So basically, you play a Lord. If you don't have the Recruiter, you can do some cool stuff with Shardless Agent. So basically, all of your creatures uh, cost zero. They, you can cast them without paying their mana cost, and as though they had Flash. This is any player, but our deck is designed to abuse this card better. That's awesome. Um, so, <laughs> we might get to mess around with this. Um, other things I can say about Recruiter. So basically, if you don't have Recruiter, you can still win with the Aloran. Mackie. So basically, uh, uh, if you have the Recruiter, it's really simple. You recruit into um, Stalker. Stalker bounces Recruiter. You recruit again. You get Harpy. Harpy returns Stalker, Stalker bounces Recruiter, you recruit again, and this time you get Strix. Lauren works the way that you buy Recruiters and then build Painter. <laughs> True. So does that make sense? Okay, let me let me do the order again. So you 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 have a Lauren, and let's say you did hit the Recruiter. If you don't have Recruiter, you have to go Shardless Agent. Shardless Agent, you hope to hit something good. And if you do, you can kind of keep going, uh, but it's just usually just value. Um, so the deck can just be a value deck. It can also play the uh, Aluren plan. Maybe some Hymn to Turok would be good, although the mana base is horrendous, and Taiga and Tropical don't help that. So I don't think it can really be a Hymn to Turok Liliana deck. I think it's green, green, blue, blue. I think that Jace, Hardcast Force, and then Aluren are the desirables in this deck. I don't know. I could be wrong. I've, I've never played it before. Our friend a Gator said he could let us borrow the pieces. <laughs> Fair enough. Moto lag much. Spawn, I gotta know, whenever I watch Legacy GP streams, I see plenty of decks called Storm, Anosium, and so on. Aren't they all the same? They're actually a difference. There absolutely is a difference, Wrathbat. So, um... Ant stands for Anosium Tendrils. Anosium Tendrils is considered the most resilient build. Um, it's more about deck manipulating into the perfect kill. Um, there's another variant of Storm that's played Wrathbat, which is a little more inexpensive. I'm pretty sure this is, like, just gonna crash... I can't even... I can't even... Wow. It's just crashing. Um, yeah, Moto's crashing. Wait for it to respond? Never works. Um, just look up Tess and add big difference. Right, Tess, the Epic Storm, is what Tess stands for. And the Epic Storm um, is more about past in flames and graveyard kills and quicker kills. Uh, it's not as resilient... <laughs> It's not as resilient as Ant, as Nauseam Tendrils, but it is faster. Um, and it can more reliably storm out, even if the end result is an army of goblins that usually is good enough to get there, unless you're playing perhaps against, I don't know, Miracles and they're able to sweep them up. Or your opponent has uh, a board state that has enough creatures, it's able to handle the goblins. Um, maybe close some unneeded tabs. No, I just think it just close. I think I, it's just not happy with me, man. I think it's just not happy. Oh, I bought Star Realms in paper. If you guys have never seen Star Realms, it's made by. Hey, let me get the box. It's made by the guys who did. It was like twelve. I got it at the. I got it at the hobby store, and I was playing with my brothers, and I wanted to play with my friends, but we ended up just playing Magic, which is fine. Magic is magic, and I'm not disappointed, even though. I bought this hoping that we would play at least one game. So Star Realms is made by, designed by Magic Hall of Famers Darwin Castle and Rob Dougherty. I'm guessing that's how you 
pronounce his name. I was going to show you some of the cards from the deck and maybe get you guys interested in it because I bought it and it was like...